Okay, so matter. We generally define matter as something that has mass and volume, it takes up space, right? There are three phases of matter. I realize you may have learned about like plasma as a fourth state of matter, but in chemistry, we stick to the three basics, solids, liquids, and gases. And I have them labeled here, what you might see microscopically if you could zoom in far enough. A solid will just end up with all of the constituent parts locked in place. A liquid, they're still quite close together, but they're able to move past each other. So there is more motion here than in a solid. So they can tumble across each other. And a gas, they're extremely far separated and able to move quite easily. They aren't even interacting with each other, essentially. And there you have it. You can think about it for a while, but we have the solids, the liquids, and the gases. What makes the difference? I mean, if you look here, you'll see we're talking about the same thing in all of these, whatever this is. Here it is as a solid. Here it is as a liquid. Here it is as a gas. Still the same item. So what's the difference? The way we look at it is that the difference is its speed. This might just be jiggling a little in place. Jiggle, jiggle, jiggle. Here they're sort of oh, slowly moving around each other. And here they're just zipping along. That's how they drew this this way to make you have the impression of it moving quickly. So these atoms move faster as the temperatures increase. Oh, so that explains why we might see something as a solid, add enough heat to it until it melts and is liquid. Add even more heat to it and you can get it to turn into a gas. That's the idea there. We have solids, we have liquids, and we have gases. So we said that we like to view things symbolically. So what's the descriptor for a solid? Well, when we write it down, we don't want to write the whole word down, so we'll put it in parentheses and we'll put an S. If it's a liquid, we'll put an L. Now you notice I use a script L there because otherwise it might look like a one. Or it could be a gas, and we'll use G for that. Now there are some other things that can happen. For example, up here I had salt in water, right? So when I had salt water, I would look at that and say, let's say it's pure sodium chloride, but it's in water. I would put AQ for aqueous so that you know the salt is actually in water just by doing that. Now after you did the distillation, you would end up with the sodium chloride as a solid, and you'd end up with the water as a liquid, and they would be separated. This is the symbolic. What would I say about it in a macroscopic sense? If I have a solid, I can't push through it. That's what I would observe. It's solid. If I try to push through it, it's just going to move. Or I'm going to move. All right, but there, that's a solid pin. Ah, ah, nope. Can't push through it, it just moves instead. If it's a liquid, I can push through, but I have to use some effort. You know, if you go swimming and you try to push through it hard, and you really have to put a lot of effort into moving through water. So push through with effort. And when it comes to a gas, I'm just gonna say it's easy to push through. Most of the time you don't even notice, but if you were like going down the freeway at 70 miles an hour and you put your hand out the door, you would notice that air. It would be like, oh, yeah, I feel it, you know. But in general, it's easy to push through. So this is what we would see at the macroscopic level. Okay, third level, right? Microscopic, what am I going to see at a microscopic level? Well, the solids we have right here, right? Now, if I have it, like on a table, maybe I see a little pile of salt and it's just sitting there minding its own business. If I had a liquid, it would form a little puddle or maybe if I don't want it to form a little puddle, I'll put it in something, it will all gather at the bottom. If it's a gas, if I want to contain it, I'm going to have to contain it on all fronts. Every side has to have something to keep it in because otherwise it's going to escape because it's moving, it's going, it's going to go any direction it wants and until it hits a wall, it is not going to stay put. 
these do have some similarities. Quite often in chemistry, we will refer to these as condensed matter, or these are the condensed states, because the individual molecules are close together. This is not close together. We talked about chemical and physical properties. We can also talk about chemical and physical changes because those are actually, you know, either an alteration or a process. Physical. Okay, now remember the physical. We're not changing the stuff. So what are physical changes? Well, primarily they are changes in its state. Is it a solid that gets changed to a liquid, a liquid that gets changed to a gas? Or, hey, guess what? Sometimes you can change a solid to a gas, which is why we have a five here, because we're going to show a picture of that. Also from your book, a lovely example here, where they have put these, the lowest energy, slowest moving at the bottom, solids, in the middle, liquids, and then when it's really freely able to move and not even interacting with its own particles, a gas. And then we have labeled what all the different changes are called. Now, some of these you're quite familiar with. If a solid turns into a liquid, it's melting. Yeah, yeah. If a liquid turns into a solid, it's freezing. You're very familiar with those particular words. If a liquid becomes a gas, it's vaporization. Sometimes we call it evaporation, but vaporization. If a gas goes back to being a liquid, that's condensation. Now, here's the two you're least likely to have heard before. A solid turning directly to a gas. Part of the reason you're not familiar with it is it doesn't happen very often. It's called sublimation. And the best example I can give you is if you go buy a block of dry ice, it is a solid, and it will turn into a gas. You never see it be a liquid, which is why they call it dry ice. But it's not ice at all. It's not water. It's carbon dioxide. And then there is taking a gas and turning it directly into a solid. That is called deposition. So you should know all these different names of how these transformations are labeled. What happens? If I say, hey, deposition, then you should be thinking, okay, that's a gas and it's turning into a solid. Deposition is, they do a lot of that in Silicon Valley when they're making up printed circuit boards. They do it by deposition. So the physical, it's still the same substance. We're just changing what state it is in. Is it a gas, a solid, or a liquid? Now what is it? has been changed from one to the other. In chemical changes, it's an actual transformation. And that brings us back to our example of the magnesium metal that was burning. It's burning because it's combining with oxygen. They are being changed from their original magnesium completely separate from oxygen to become a new substance, magnesium oxide. Another one that's very uh, common is Hey, if you have carbohydrates that you've ingested, oxygen gets combined with them and you will end up producing energy and also carbon dioxide and water.